what an honor it is to be here today to address those of you who have done so much to, to change the way you address our energy needs and our environmental needs and to change science. As Erica mentioned, I'm the founder of Cherokee, and I've been asked to tell you who we are and why we created Industrial Heat as a funding source for LNR emitters. Unlike many of you, I'm not a scientist, I'm an entrepreneur. But we share the common bond of innovation. As Peter Drucker wrote, entrepreneurship sees the major task in society as doing something different. Rather than doing something better, what is already being done. Doing better what is already being done is like making coal power plants a little bit more efficient. You are working to make them unnecessary. Thank God that some, like many of you, have the courage to disrupt. In 1921, experts determined that the limits of flight had been reached already. In 1932, it was determined was unlikely ever to be feasible. And in the 1950s, when I was born, it was widely believed that pollution was a necessary part of economic development. Paradigm shifts do not come easily, especially in science. As Thomas Kuhn wrote in The Nature of Scientific Revolutions, usually they are born out of the crises of our time. If you're on the leading edge of a paradigm shift, a paradigm shift, you will be attacked by your peers, and you will be attacked by the institutions of the status quo. We feel called to upset, to upset two core business paradigms. First, the traditional ethos of environmentalism is, is that we should strive to be less bad. But as America's leading environmental philosopher William McDonough points out in his book, Cradle to Cradle, being less bad is not being good. It's still bad, just a little bit less so. If you're driving your car toward a cliff, it doesn't help you to slow down. You need to turn around and go in a different direction. We need solutions that don't create pollution in the first place, not marginal improvements that only reduce pollution. Second, let's challenge the assumption of scarcity. We actually live in a world of abundance, at least with respect to energy. Sadly, due to society's ineffectiveness to date, the world struggles with energy scarcity, at least in some regions. Why do we burn petroleum or coal, which unlocks only a tiny fraction of the true energy inside? When we do this, we release almost all of the mass of the coal into the air through a stack of emissions. Then we scatter this mass around the planet. Carbon and heavy metals can be highly beneficial. They're not necessarily pollutants, but they are if they're in the wrong place. CO2 in the air is a pollutant. Carbon in a tree is not. Heavy metals can be highly beneficial, unless they're in the wrong place, like on farmland in China. We need an entirely new paradigm. This hopeful vision was the genesis of our work at Industrial Heat. When I entered school, the United States was in the midst of an environmental crisis. Most people have forgotten about this, or perhaps never even knew about it. But when I was young, periodically, industrial rivers in our cities would burst into flame due to the pollution in them. And sometimes, in some of our worst polluted cities, people where their headlights on during the day. Our air pollution was as bad as air pollution in China in some cities. This was America when I was beginning to think about my place in the world. I was worried when I saw that, that photo, the first photo of our living planet from space. Many of you remember that. We had never seen the Earth. Which is ironic. see that it was a living planet. I felt compelled to do something about this. Later at university, I wrote my master's thesis on acid rain, air pollution, and coal plants. My first job was at the Korea Institute of Science and Technology in Seoul, where I 
work on pollution converting coal, which was used for home heating and cooking. I saw pollution throughout East Asia. I returned and went to Yale to become an environmental lawyer. But uh, in the U.S., practicing law is, uh, is, is some people think it's somewhat boring, and I fell in that category. Thankfully, I got a job working at Bain and Company in steel plants on energy efficiency. In 1984, I converted brick plants from burning fossil fuels to burning biomass, which was being dumped into landfills where it turned into methane gas.